Live from WQAD, this is News 8's Good Morning Quad Cities. Beefing up security, why one local college is considering arming their on-campus security. And beefing up the temperatures, James, come on! Wow. It's not getting warm enough. Here's a live look from our Eagle Eye <laughs> in downtown Davenport looking to the west. Someone wants spring now. I do. Just a little <laughs> bit more. Just a little bit more. Thank you for joining us for our first look at the news. I'm Julie Sis. Uh, I'm Jim Mertens. This is Good Morning Quad Cities at 430. And I'm Chief Meteorologist James Zahara. I just may give you that, by the way. Well, the problem weekend. is, is that you gave us a taste of it on right, Sunday, and I think tough. I got a little spoiled, and now I expect <laughs> more. <laughs> you want that bowl a lot bigger, though. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All that goody. Uh, watch out. Well, we could be seeing it by the weekend, but uh, for now, we got to talk about uh, a lot of winter's wrath returning, I guess you can say. Right now, all is quiet for the time being 32 degrees a south wind at 10 may actually climb that temperature a couple of degrees but that may take place just for the early morning hours why because we've got a clipper that is racing on in early this morning and you can see just out to our west there is not just some uh, rain out there there is some uh, mixture of some rain and snow and then all snow the further north as you go that will be racing through here come early this morning and then it's going to be a whole lot of wind it's going to be a whole lot of cold Cold, and oh, that really? will help slowly drop those temperatures as we go through the day and that will settle as we go through the rest of the work week. We'll tell you exactly how cold those numbers will be, how strong those winds will be as well. Coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, James. Uh, residents in Henderson have been without water for nearly a week and they say the problem is yet to be fixed. The community still has plenty of questions about their ongoing water problems and as News 8's Jenna Morton reports, the biggest question is when will it get back to normal? What is our anticipation for when we're going to be moving? Or when we're going to have water? You could find the village of Henderson, uh, Illinois here Monday night. I, it's very frustrating. It's a race when the water comes on. All there for the same reason, wanting some answers. Since Wednesday, residents have been under a boil order after frozen pipes caused a leak. I do believe that the village of Henderson does need some help with its water system. Monday, a meeting was held to give an update on the process. Elected officials, the Knox County Health Department and MSI, a mechanical contracting company in Galesburg, all were there to answer questions. We never know if we're going to have water, if we're not. When residents do have water, they say it's black and has an odor. It's not fit to bathe in or to do laundry, wash our dishes. I mean, we can't wash our hands. But community members say someone is to blame. Some are pointing their finger at the mayor. It would be easy to resign and walk away. I don't do that. I'm here for the village of Henderson. Voicing their list of frustrations from not being informed. I feel like that the elected officials did not keep us in the loop to know, you know, exactly what was happening. To the village not having a backup plan. A problem some say will only happen again. I definitely believe it's going to happen again. I have lived here since I was two years old. I've moved here in 82. You know, we've had water problems since I can remember. Jenna Morton, WQAD News 8. All right, thank you, Jenna. The village hopes to have the pipe fixed today, but if not, it would have to call in another company, which is not sure when that would actually take place. The community will remain under a boil order until then. The American Red Cross has donated bottled water for the residents. The family of a Davenport woman who's been missing since last month are offering a reward now to help find her. Carrie Olson's family offering a thousand dollar reward for any information that leads to her whereabouts. The 29 year old was last seen December 28th at a 7-Eleven in Rock Island. Anyone with information should contact Davenport Police. The family also collecting donations at the IH Mississippi Valley Credit Union to go toward reward money. A Quad City teacher found dead along Interstate 88 near Dixon in November froze to death. The Lee County coroner has confirmed to News 8 that hypothermia is the official cause of death for 65 year old Lee Catlin. Catlin's body was found along the interstate on the morning of November 13th by highway workers. His car was found about a mile away. State police were called by two motorists who reported seeing him in distress by the side of the road, but he wasn't found until 12 hours later. State police are fighting requests from News 8 for more information on how they responded to the call that night. It was a deadly weekend on the roads in Iowa. At least 11 people died in car accidents. A four year old girl was killed uh, Friday in a head on collision. Four other people were killed in separate crash. 
Another five people died in a rollover accident. Police blame icy roads for at least three of those accidents. Drivers in Illinois will have to continue to go 65 miles an hour until the new signs are put up. The Transportation Department still has not been able to put up new 70 mile per hour speed limit signs. It was set to increase in our area on Interstate 88, 80, 280 and 74 two weeks ago. A spokesperson blames last week's bad weather. The new speed limit law took effect January 1st and the Illinois DOT had hoped to have roughly 900 new signs up by last Friday. Augustana College is looking into arming some of its public safety officers on campus. Right now, there are 10 unarmed officers, but a new proposal gaining interest would arm a few of those. News 8's Megan Noe explains why the college is considering the change. Creating a three-person police department on Augustana's campus what some consider a proactive approach to nightmare possibilities. The potential for us having someone very quickly on the scene able to um, respond to that and perhaps neutralize the shooter would increase. The department would stand alongside seven other public safety officers, but police would also be academy trained and able to carry a weapon on campus. The landscape has changed. Um, from what I grew up in. Augustana's Dean of Students says it's a matter of keeping with the times. There are armed officers in high schools, as you know, they're at hospitals, they're at malls, um, and it's just, I think, one of the many tools, many tools that you need in your toolbox to try to ensure that your campus is as safe as it can be. Student reaction to the plan, though, is mixed. I don't think it's necessary. Many saying they feel campus is safe enough already. And if it's that serious, then um, the actual Rock Island police should come in and they should take care of the situation. I think arming the actual public safety was just make everyone even more scared than they are of the public safety. Others, though, are positive about the idea. I think it could be good. Because, I mean, like, you know, Rock Island, like, PD, they're here, like, every Friday, Wednesday, you know, the whole weekend, like, you know, monitoring everything. And Campbell says campus police departments have become a growing trend across the country, as Augustana looks to stay ahead of the curve. Megan Noe, WQAD News 8. Thank you, Megan. The Board of Trustees must approve the establishment of a campus police department first. That proposal will go to the board at its next meeting. A local school district is introducing a new state-of-the-art app to keep students safe and parents informed. Clinton School District mobile site for smartphones and tablets offers special announcements like school closings, late starts, and early dismissals. Users can also see daily announcements, menus, and information about individual schools. For instructions on how to download the site, visit the Clinton School District's website. Western Illinois University is being called one of the most military-friendly universities in the country. The university was recognized for its on-campus resources for veterans and military personnel, its ROTC program, and also flexible academic programs. The 2014 Guide to Military Friendly Colleges and University provides potential students with information about institutions that go out of their way to give back to our men and women in uniform. Iowans now have a new way to stay healthy and have fun while doing it. The Healthiest State Initiative is now giving events its seal of approval. That means groups that have walks, runs, swims, or biking events across the state can get the event endorsed and promoted by the initiative. The Healthiest State Initiative actually started in 2011 since it began, Iowa has moved from 19th to 9th in state health rankings. Still ahead on Good Morning Quad City's top honors, the automaker that won both North American Car and Truck of the Year awards. Plus, drink up why your morning cup of coffee could be beneficial for your brain. And winter's wrath will be returning today. And we're not just talking about the cold, but as you can see, we're talking about a combination of rain, sleet, snow. Let's start off your Tuesday morning. We'll tell you exactly how long that is going to last and what that means for temperatures as well right after the break here on Good Morning Quad Cities. You're watching Good Morning Quad Cities with Jim Burtons and Julie Sisk.